for hydrographs. And hydrographs are typically on these PE exams. They're continuous plots of discharge versus time. And we see a figure of a hydrograph. Stream flow hydrographs are comprised of two components. As you may remember, it is the direct runoff, which we looked at the definition of that, which is really the precipitation that was the result of the particular storm, that event that occurred. That is this upper part of this particular stream flow. And the stream flow also includes what's referred to as the base flow, which is primarily what's the subsurface flow or groundwater flow coming into the stream. The direct runoff and base flow can be separated. It's called the straight line method. And you see that the base flow is shaded on this particular figure. Now, also on this figure, in addition to a hydrograph which has flow rate, cubic feet per second on the y-axis and time on the x-axis, we also have on this particular figure precipitation in inches. You see the rainfall event right here. And we see what is common where there's a rainfall event that occurs. The runoff is going to make its way into the stream that is being analyzed. And that runoff then is going to increase the level in the stream as flow goes into the stream. And there's going to be a lag between the rainfall event and what's going to be the peak of your hydrograph. And there's other terms like the level in the stream is rising rising limb of the hydrograph and falling falling limb and then it comes back to base flow after all that rainfall event precipitation has completed its runoff and the stage or level in the stream or river have come back to normal or base flow notice the time duration can be as many as can be units of days or many hours okay so there's two pieces of data plotted there rainfall event and what's your flow rate in your stream Moving on to the next page, as a refresher, hydrographs not only can be for what we see at the bottom figure of this page 66, where it is a drainage basin area in plan view with a lot of tributaries coming into and a gauging station. Let's start with that one first. And it's going to then have a hydrograph that looks like this on the right. It has a base flow, primarily from the groundwater, and then it has what from the precipitation that falls on the drainage basin area or watershed it's going to have this rise and has come back down for the reasons that we stated figures at the top hydrographs can be plotted for let's say a parking lot area you can see that the flow is coming off and the grade is sloped towards a detention basin in this particular hydrograph that's on the right it starts here at the ordinate and it ends at the ordinate because there isn't any extra level and on that pavement it's going to completely you know drain off into the detention basin okay all right moving on to the next page part of this hydrograph separation method if we've removed the base flow we now have what's left is the direct runoff or net rainfall curve. And we can determine what is the volume underneath that particular curve. It's the area under the curve is the volume of the precipitation that has fallen. To do that, we look at the time increments of which the data was gathered. And then we have the plot points for the cubic feet per second that plot up hydrograph shape. So those are histograms that you could sum together. Or we could use the method like is explained in this example at the bottom of page 67. Calculate the volume in the direct runoff hydrograph below. The volume of the direct runoff hydrograph, or the runoff, can be calculated by summing all the ordinates of the direct runoff hydrograph and multiplying the sum by the time increment between each ordinate. We see a time increment is every hour See, hour 0, hour 1, hour 2, etc. So we sum up those ordinates, which are here, 
right? 12, 35, your peak is at 65 cubic feet per second. Add those up, you come up with 192 cubic feet per second. So here is our equation. Hundred and ninety two cubic feet per second. Now that is a flow rate which has a time component in the denominator. We gotta get rid of that time component because we're looking for volume. Our answer needs to be in volume, cubic feet. So we multiply times the time increment in which the data was gathered. In this case it was one hour. Okay, and then we adjust for our seconds and we come up with the volume.